Hello guys. Uh, another cable here. Now you can see this cable, and as soon as you see that, if you if you have worked with cables before, uh, you may be tempted to treat this as a distributed load hanging from a cable. And that's what it is, right? But not quite. You cannot apply the formulas that we derive for uh, distributed loading in cables. Because you can see the shape of the cable. The shape of the cable is a funicular shape. If you have that funicular shape, meaning straight lines, then each one of these are concentrated loads. And that's the way we have to treat this problem. Now, how do I know how much weight is hanging from, let's say, here? Or from here? Or in any one of them? Well, we can apply tributary area to this concept. What is the tributary area that is supported, let's say, by this cable? Well, it's half of this distance, half of this mass hanging there. And for this one, this half plus this half, and so on. This half, this half, this half. How much is that? This is going to be, every span is 30, meaning this distance here is going to be 15. And the load is 6. 15 times 6, this is 90. And if this is 90, this is 90, and this is 180, 180, 180, and 90 again. There you go. So the problem is asking, remember, the maximum tension and the sag at B. The maximum tension happens when the cable has the maximum slope. We already discussed that. And the maximum slope is happening here. If you don't know, then you have to calculate every one of the sags and every one of the slopes and, and check and verify where the maximum uh, slope is happening. But we know that it's happening there. Now, uh, what is the next step? Well, the next step is calculating the reactions. And you know this is going to be a support here. It's going to have a reaction AY and a reaction AX, as well as this EY and EX. How do we do that? Well, per symmetry, we can say that AY and EY are the same. And we can say that it's a summation of all of these laws, but it's the same thing as saying this is 6 times 120 divided by 2, and that's 360 kilo. There you go. Now, in order to calculate the horizontal one, well, I can make a cut here, exactly there, and study either side of this cable. Let's say that I'm going to study when I say I make a cut, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do it every single time. But what I'm saying is this: you see, you make a cut there, and then you reach this point. You know you're gonna have a, uh, this force is not acting, and then you're gonna have that tension happening in this way. So I'm gonna do moment at this point. What is gonna be the summation of moment at this point? Negative 180 times 30, negative 90 times 60, and then you're gonna have EY times 60 positive and negative EX times the distance from here to there, which is 30. So let's put that in writing. Summation of moments at C equals zero. And I'm going to say that I'm using the side, the right side of that cut over there. So if we do here, we're going to say uh, negative 180 times 30, negative 90 times 60 plus EY, which is 360 times 60 minus EX times 30. And of course, that has to be equal to 0. So you can solve for EX. Solving for EX, we get the EX is equal to 360 K. Now, once we know how much is EX, uh, and we know how much is uh, AY or EY, then you're going to jump immediately and you're going to say, oh, I know this. The tension is just EX squared plus EY squared square root of that, because we did that before. Yeah, but before was before, and now is now. 
So be very careful what is happening here. Pay attention to this little big detail. I'm going to study this just because it's the, I like to write in this direction instead of the other direction. That's it. But let's talk about the support A. This is the support A. The support A is here. That support, we have a force AY of 360. And we have EX or EX and AX are the same because summation of forces in X in the overall structure. So the reaction in this support here is going to be 360 also because it's, it's the same value uh, here. Coincidence. Okay? It's the same value. Coincidence. Coincidence. Now, what else do we have here? We have a load hanging from this end, which is 90. And what else do we have here? We have the cable tension here acting in this way. In this way. In this direction. This is the cable tension acting in this direction here. The tension that I'm looking for. Now, if you look at that tension, let me call that, I don't know, TAB. Okay, if you look at that tension, and let's say that we do summation of forces here, obviously. If I do summation of forces in X, the X component of this is going to be 360 of that TAB. And the Y component of this has to be, and that's the difference, and that's the big detail, 360 minus 90. And that's 270. So those are the two components of the TAB. This is not the vertical component of this because the support is has another force hanging directly from the from it. So the tension A B is just gonna be the square root of 360 squared plus 270 squared. And the tension A B then is gonna be 450 Q. This problem Almost everyone has it wrong because of that little big detail that we have over there. Now, the other part of the problem is much of the same. Calculate the sag at B. So if I have to calculate the sag at B, part two, sag at B, we just make a cut here, this point, and I study the left side because it's easier. So this distance is going to be the sag at B. And the only thing that we have to do is summation of moments at B. And I'm going to use the, the left side this time for that. So what do you do if you do moment here and you use the left side? You have positive 90 times 30 minus AY, which is 360 times the same Teddy. You could even combine those, combine these two and only one, but I, I, I wanted to keep them separate for you to, to see what happens. Plus HB multiplied by AX, which is also 360, and that has to be zero. And then you solve for HB, and HB is going to be 90 times 30 minus 360 times 30 is 8100. Pass it to the other side. It's going to be positive divided by 360, 22.5. 22.5 feet. And that concludes this simple, but at the same time, tricky cable problem. Now, the other thing is, if you, if you fall into temptation and you treat this as a distributed load, that would work, maybe, if these two hangers doesn't exist. Then you might get a very, very close result. But with those two hangers here, that's not going to work. So check this out. Think about it. Don't memorize it. See you later, guys. Have a good day. Keep watching.